Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Hey, what's happening, friends? It's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Stick around. Today, I'm really excited to share with you a brand new effects app from Audio Modern. This one is called PanFlow, and it's a creative panning modulator. It's 100% free, it features creative inspiration like their other apps, and I think that this is a must-have for anyone producing music on an iPad. Come on, let me show you some examples of what PanFlow sounds like. Before we listen to some examples today, I just want to show you exactly what PanFlow is doing to the sounds that we put it on. So I've created a really basic session in AUM, and we're just playing an arpeggio on the SynthMaster 1 synthesizer from KV331 Audio. I'm running the PanFlow app on that, and I'm going to randomize this app a few times so you can hear exactly what it's doing to the sound. Just a really quick overview of what we're about to hear. This is a little groove that I've put together inside of Beatmaker 3. It features drums, bass, some strings, a pad, and a noise riser. And what I've done is I've used the PanFlow app on the strings uh, to gently, just very, you see that the stereo width here is not going all the way side to side. It's a very subtle amount of movement that I'm getting here on the strings. And if I bring up the next track, you can see that I've done the same thing. I've used a very small amount of stereo width here on pan flow so we're not getting really dramatic shifts in the panning from left to right but what we're getting with pan flow is just some general subtle extra uh, interest, life, and movement in the stereo field of our tracks. Uh, lastly here, I've got a riser sound, kind of like a whoosh, you know, sound, and I've done the same thing again with pan flow here. It's just ever, you know, ever evolving and bringing different um, stereo width elements to that riser sound. So every time the riser happens in this little groove, it's a little bit different in the stereo field. Let me plug in direct sound and show you what this sounds like.
Okay, now I'm sure most of you are already familiar with how the workflow of the uh, Audio Modern apps works, but we're gonna go over this briefly for those of you who don't. It's based around this large randomization button in the middle, where every time we press this, we get a different result down here. What we're looking at is we're looking at in the, in the center line, this is the, um, the left-right stereo field. So the center line would be like a mono signal, and then the lines as they extend out from the left and right side of that center line, you know, represent the left and right channels of audio. We can adjust how wide the panning results get if we don't want a full, you know, all the way 100% left and 100% right, you know, panning. We can use this adjustment here. And every time we click the button, we get a different randomization result that will affect the panning of our sound in the stereo field. If we have the first uh, button here on the left highlight, we get a pretty simple pattern. If we click the one in the middle, we get a little bit more complex pattern with more dots being added. Now, I want to show you that we can go in and we can freely edit this as well by adding our own dots. We don't need to use the randomization. We can draw in our own, you know, panning curves, uh, whatever you need to do. If you want to delete a dot, we can just double click on a dot. You know, we can just add another dot there or we can randomize to get a new result. If we want an even more complex spline we can click this third button here and now when we randomize we get even more you know divisions of that audio moving in the left and right stereo field uh, if we want the lines straight like this we can have the first button we go back to the more simple one okay so we can get these kind of long straight lines if we want the lines to be a little bit more curvy and the panning automation to be a little bit more smooth we can use this second one over here to sort of smooth out the these curves, right? Or we can get it to stick to the grid uh, rhythmically using these type of curves where it's a really dramatic change and that's going to shift with the tempo of our you know, track as this syncs to the tempo of your track. Now we can save presets down here at the bottom if we create, you know, a, a curve that sounds really great and we'd like to save that to bring back at another time. We can just click that there. Let's say we're continuing to randomize and we've created, oh, I don't know, another curve that we really like as well and we want to be able to get back to that. We can just click the button at the bottom and make that a preset number two. Now we can go back and forth, you know, manually between those presets at any time. But the neat thing about the Audio Modern apps in my opinion, is their ability to creatively and intelligently randomize the results of what, you know, what's happening in the app. Over here, what we've got is we've got a little uh, infinity symbol. And if we turn that on, there's a number next to that. And the number represents the amount of measures that the pattern will play through before it randomly comes up with another um, randomization. So for example, if I just bring this down to one bar here and I have the infinity symbol turned on and I press play on the iPad, we're not getting any direct sound or anything like that. I just wanted to show you how the randomization works. So here, every single bar, the infinity symbol is creating, you know, a new panning curve. And we can have that set to any division we like. We don't need it to go super fast. We can go down here and go very slow even, like 16 bars. So say you're creating like dub techno or something and you want that stab to just kind of float really gently around the stereo spectrum, maybe a little bit slower than I'm showing, you know. Um, you can use these slower settings here. And now, you know, when I press play, you'll see that the cursor is moving very, very slowly through the pattern, right? Or if we want, you know, to get really super glitchy, we can change the speed of this up to even 16th notes. So it's happening really, really fast, right? And just continually evolving and shifting. This can be really handy for creating like glitchy rhythms and stuff like that. All right, let me show you some more examples of what this actually sounds like in a musical context. 
In this example, I'm using AUM on the iPad, and I've created a little bit of a beat with an older version of Playbeat. I've added some interesting percussion over the top of that beat using the most recent version of Playbeat. And what I've done is I put the pan flow on that percussion this time. So we're not hearing it on a melodic context, uh, in a melodic context rather, but we're hearing it in a percussive context this time. And unlike the other examples, this time pan flow is adjusting the full stereo width of these drum sounds. Um, let's go ahead and plug in direct sound and I'll play you what this glitchy beat sounds like. In this example, I'm using pan flow again to get some really subtle movement and interest in the stereo field. We're not using it as a really dramatic, you know, panning effect. This is sort of a drum and bass groove that I've created with some drums, some bass shots, some chord stabs, and some high strings. Now the drums and the bass are being unaffected by pan flow, but the chord stabs here uh, have a very subtle amount of, you know, movement that's being uh, changed every eight bars within Beatmaker 3 to a random new, you know, automated uh, panning. Same with the high strings here. I've got not a full, you know, stereo width, but more of a middle amount. So we're getting just some subtle movement on these uh, high string sounds. Let's go ahead and plug in direct sound and I'll show you what this sounds like. 